Hello everyone, I'm back again with another video for you and um, first of all I'm really sorry that I haven't been here for a few weeks with any new videos or new free printables. Further along in the video I am going to explain to you why I haven't been here and if anyone else out there watching this is in a situation where they find that a lot of their free time or not even free time, but a lot of their time is taken up caring for an elderly person or perhaps a disabled member of the family. You may be interested to hear what I have to say and um, perhaps we can find support in each other as we try to find time for ourselves to craft. Meanwhile, I hope you enjoy the free printables that I have for you there are three of them this time and you can find them over on my website which is www.funcraftstodoathome.com and all you need to do is go over to my, my website, my, my craft blog and follow the link and you'll be able to download these free printables and with them you will be able to make everything that you see here and there are other images on one of the sheets that you may find useful to make greetings cards or anything that you think of when you see the designs you can make. So first of all I made this pendant using parts of all three of the printables. So this is the first sheet of designs and I used this to make the pendant. Then I used the other two printables to make the beads to make these bracelets. So I'm going to start with the paper bead strip templates that you will need to print off to make the bracelets. So you will see that one of them, this one has no guidelines on it and the other one does have guidelines on. And that's because this one you need to cut up. As you see me doing here, and then cut each strip in half where the design starts again. And this is because these strips are wider than the second lot that you're going to see me make in a moment. So this design is made to go through a straight cut paper shredder. And that's what you see me doing here. And this is why you need to cut it in half, because otherwise you would end up having to cut each one in half. So when you've cut your strips, you need to, as always, take a marker and make sure that the edges of the bead strips are coloured. And we're going to do exactly the same thing with the wider ones. Okay, so at this point I'm going to explain to you where I have been over the last few weeks. Now, some of you may know that I, since, since the first lockdown came, about two days before the first lockdown back in March 2020, I think it was, I could see the way things were going and my mum was living alone. Um, managing with the help of my sister and I on a daily basis and we had started to have carers coming in once in the morning to help her get dressed but when lockdown was looming on the horizon I kind of had a bad feeling about the whole thing and so we invited my mum to come and live with us my dad had died in 2018, mum was lost without him, her health wasn't brilliant and so she said yes she'd love to come and live with us and obviously we didn't know how things were going to pan out with the pandemic and the ongoing lockdowns and by the summer of 2020 we realised that this wasn't going to be over in a hurry and so we all moved back to my mum's house um, for six weeks while we had builders come in 
and convert what was my office into um, a lovely bedroom come sitting room for my mum and we also had a wet room built downstairs so she had everything that she would need on the ground floor and that has worked out really well but as time has gone on mum who is 93 now has deteriorated somewhat and last weekend she really went downhill and it kind of goes back even further than that the week or the couple of weeks previous to that probably around about the 18th of August she developed uh, a chest infection and she seemed to have flu on top of that which she had caught from somebody that came to visit her um, it was definitely flu and not the other thing because the person that she caught it from and the rest of her family were all tested and nobody had the other dreaded disease so for the last three weeks my mum has been very very ill she lost all her strength she couldn't stand they gave her some antibiotics that caused chronic diarrhea um, we, we really have been in a crisis here um, with trying to take care of my mum and at one point they wanted to put her into hospital my mum doesn't ever want to go into hospital again she's of the opinion that um, you know if if she's at the end of her life she wants to be here at home with us and I tend to agree because the hospitals are not good places to be at the moment for anyone they're overworked understaffed and they're very very noisy and the staff just haven't got time to make sure that people eat or drink the food that they get served is not the kind of food that we are feeding my mum my mum gets a, a very nutrient dense diet here with us and I think that is what has pulled her round because we've gone from last weekend we thought we were going to lose her and within the space of a week she has got her strength back at age 93 after having serious flu and chest infection I mean it was full-blown flu she had she couldn't stand she had no interest in anything she didn't want to talk to us she was sleeping all the time it really looked as if she wasn't going to make it and then suddenly she turned the corner and I think it paid off that I had been feeding her spoonfuls of smoothie that was made with you know really high nutrient stuff no dairy products lots of avocado fruit vegetables vitamins and I'm pleased to say that finally this week she is I wouldn't say she's back to her old self but she's certainly on the way back to her old self. She's asking for food again, her favourite foods. She's asked to be taken out in the fresh air. And on Sunday, we even managed to push her for four miles in her wheelchair by the sea. So she could get some good clean sea air into her lungs. And um, so that's it. Um, that is why I haven't been here making any videos. And I just want to say, if there's any of you out there that are in this same position that I am, please talk to me through the comments, because I know how stressful this all is. And you're always welcome to talk to me about your experiences, okay? So, there is both my the skinny strips and the thicker strips. So now I'm going to turn my attention to the pendant design. And obviously I am using one of the circular designs. These designs are all taken from this painting, which is one of my original paintings. And I'm cutting out the circle to go on one of these wooden blanks, which are available on Amazon. I probably have them in my Amazon shop. Um, I can't be sure, but have a look and see. I think I will be putting them in there. So all I did was 
to make sure that the circular designs would fit on the wooden blanks cut the cut them out using I cut one out using my circle punch I think this one's either a one and a half or two inch I'm not sure um, but obviously you could cut cut it out with scissors if you don't have a circle punch and then I'm simply going to use some solid glue prick stick in my case to stick the design to the wooden blank I always use prick stick but any solid glue will do well sometimes I use hobbycraft solid glue so there it is stuck on and now we just need to make a small hole where we are going to put the jump ring and I use my 1 8 of an inch euro pliers I think this is around about a 19mm jump ring and it's important to open them the way you saw me do there using a couple of pairs of pliers and then you can close it up again the same way I always keep a supply of these, um, these are in my Amazon shop as well if you if you need any jump rings. So I'm now going to make these beads with the, the wider strips and I always put black felt marker on the end, the, the end that I'm going to start rolling at and then on the other end, on the opposite side of the design you need to put some glue. I do sell these um, popsicle sticks with the soft foam covering on if you want to buy them they are over in my Etsy shop for a few dollars it, they're just popsicle sticks but I have put a soft grip on to make it easier to turn them and now we're going to turn our attention to the skinny strips that we did in the paper shredder and I'm using my 3mm bead tool also sold in my Etsy shop to roll these tiny beads I love these beads I have been making um, beads from a paper shredder for years it's a really quick and easy way to get your strips cut and you can see why you need to um, color the edges because then you've got this lovely red color on the end put whatever colour you want um, and you haven't got to go to the trouble of trying to colour them once they're rolled and you can see here that I have devised a method I've been using this for years um, I cut up a tiny drinking straw to the width of the bead and then I stick it in place so when I thread the elastic through the elastic will stay where the the little tiny piece of drinking straw is it won't flop around inside and what I do I sometimes make them double holes where I will put two of these in one at the top one at the top one at the bottom but in this case I have actually um, you'll see in a moment I've actually gone ahead and put three in so it's turned these into triple hole beads when they're double I just do one at the top one at the bottom and I push them in to try and make sure that they are completely snugly against the top of the bead just rubbing a bit of glue off there And as I said, for these ones, because I wanted to make a bracelet, I put two more in to make it a triple hole bead. And all it does, um, when you make your bracelet, you can just thread three strands of one mil elastic through and the elastic will stay where you put it in those holes. You'll see in a moment, I'll show you. Um, so can you see what I mean I threaded three separate strands of elastic through top middle and bottom 
and then I tied off each each row separately. I don't know if there's anyone out there that can make neater neater knots than me. <laughs> and then all I did was I threaded the pendant through the jump ring and then once I'd done that I put one of the wider flat beads on there and then I so you can see here I'm using the two holes the two outside holes and that means that that bead will sit there nice and neatly the elastic's not going to go anywhere and then all I did was thread the narrower beads to make the necklace and I had some gorgeous tiny wooden beads and I used them to alternate between the beads on my necklace and on one of my bracelets. Well I hope you found that useful and um, please do go over to my website www.funcraftstodoathome.com and get your free printables and then you can make these pieces of jewellery as well. Thank you so much for watching everyone and I hope to be back soon with another video. I'm not sure how things are going to go with my mum so I have to just play everything by ear. I am quite busy with her at the moment, she's still very needy um, so I am more hands on than I was a few weeks ago but hopefully as she gets stronger day by day I will be able to get back to work again and bring you more videos. If I can't, I probably will at the very least carry on making free printables for you. So if you want to make sure you don't miss any free printables that don't actually appear on YouTube, go over to my blog and subscribe and at least you will be able to get the free printables and try and figure out what to do with them. Um, until next time, thanks again for watching. Bye for now.